All right, we're back for another one. I think this is episode 21, if I'm not mistaken. 21. But man, we got a, our, our guest in here. We've known him for a cool minute. We're going to talk about some of the journey, but make some noise, man. 60 East is in the house, man. What's good? What's good? What's up, brother? Good a minute, brother. man. Yeah. Been a minute since I've been in here. Yeah, welcome yeah. back. And it, how long has it been, you think, since you've been here? Has it been, it's been at least a couple years? It's been. It's been a couple, couple years. Because I know you, you came, uh, you know, promoting when the fest, which we're going to get into in a sec, but uh, when all that start, first started popping up. But, yeah, that has been a cool minute ago. That was, that's yeah, been a, I, I, yeah, I don't even remember coming in for, for the festival. And yeah. I, I think the last time I was on was with Token. Oh, oh yeah. shit. I remember. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, You're from Boston, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Token. And then he, he kind of blew up. For What's me. crazy, I was going to say, is is that guy got big. I, yeah, yeah I he, got, he got really big. Yeah, from his, his uh, you know, his freestyles and all that stuff. But I, I, I seen him, man. He got a, he's got a big following out there, man. Uh, and that's good, man. But so, like, the thing is, even before that, I, I just want to go back. We'll start from there. But, like, when we first met you, um, you were in mad grind mode, yep. artist, artist mode, artist tip right at that point. And it was around the time, I believe, it was when you uh, just did or were about to do paid dues, right? Yeah, it was um, maybe like a month before, some okay. shit like that. And, uh, yeah, we had just came on talking about the show. And, um, yeah, it was just like a whole different tip because I was like part of a group at that time, First Dirt. First and, Dirt, uh, yeah. That was really the focus, especially at that time on um, pre-paid dues was kind of like focusing on the group and kind of pushing my solo stuff to the side and doing little projects here and there. But like our main thing was like building that brand of first dirt up. Mm -hmm. Cause I remember like, like you even got the tat and everything, Yeah. but it was a, it was a push like a, um, but that was one of those, those moments where, you know, like you either going to go this way and, and do the shit. Yeah. Or just, you know, stick to doing local, uh, you know, in the garage, freestyling with the homies. It's like you took that leap at that time, like went all out as far as even the promo push. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> but but those festivals were big uh, back in the day. So it was a good look. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you said, um, you could e have either gone one or the other way. We've seen people that have, you know, done it, reached it. And then that was kind of like the height of it. And for us, it was really like the launch pad. Like to me, like that, that getting yeah. on that festival, that moment, all that momentum we build, like that whole campaign is what really kind of set us off and like kind of launched us off to have like a career within the music industry. Well, and that, and yeah, and that's kind of like kind of what I'm saying too. I, I feel like if you didn't take that big leap of faith and, and just go all in on it yep. and <clears throat> plus absorb the experience, like with, I know you, you know, you network, met a lot of artists. You got to soak in a lot of dope performances, but all that whole experience, like you said, it just kind of changed the course of where 60 East, which way he could have went at that time. It was like, yeah. so I, I think that might have, like, that's like a pivotal time in a, in a, I guess, a artist career, I guess you could say. Yeah, no, no doubt that that was definitely a de defining moment. And um, to this day, I say that was the best day of my life just because it dope. was just maybe it was it was not even just the experience but the fact that that day changed the rest of my life you know yeah, what i mean and yeah. um that kind of let us know that like we, we could do this shit. so that's definitely your favorite show you've ever performed for sure then right? for sure what year Easy. was that one 2013. oh okay um that's pretty crazy our journey also being on the platform side is seeing um artists uh grow and get into their own and not not only the the artist side but learn the business side too yep. which is something it seems that you've been able to manage well along the way um I, I wanted to ask um so from that point on um you did start you learned how to like kind of campaign and promote yourself i always thought you did a good job of that bro because kind of even when you went more towards the solo side you know from first dirt I felt like your promo was always there. Like you were keeping the fans informed when you were going places, you were showing the experience. Um, how, how has that been as far as the touring? Cause I know you set a lot of that stuff up yourself too, right? Originally yeah. that's, that's a lot of work. So it's only, you know, we'll get to it in a minute, but it, it was like you were training yourself to learn how to put on something bigger. It was crazy. But how, how's that been the touring side? fun um to it's still my favorite part of doing music right. you know what i mean getting the tour and all that i mean coming out of the pandemic it's been kind of slow um i feel everybody's still kind of like seeing what's going on but like last year 
I finally got back to it. Like um, late late last year, we went on a tour. I did a tour with uh, Elzai, and nice. um, we did like the Southwest, and it was still kind of weird. People were still like, "Should we wear masks? Should we should we shake hands?" It was no. you know. Um, now it seems like everything's back to normal, but um, somewhat. But like prior around the time you're talking about, that's when it was like once we decided to go solo, or um, right after pay dues, like we were touring as First Dirt for like two years straight. And then after we decided to go solo or whatever, that's when I was like, all right, I'm just going to start doing these tours myself. And uh, we had already did um, a tour in Europe as First Dirt. So that opened up to me like as a solo artist. So then I managed to get like a booking agent out there and started getting like on big festivals out there and tours out there and stuff like that. And then out here, I I started working with the agent also. And he started getting me on uh, on tours with like um, Joel Ortiz and R.A. the Rugged Man and fucking um, Apathy and Self Titled. um, Real spitters. And then, yeah, and then they ended up getting me on the Elzai tour. And then that connected me to Elzai, and that's how I started touring with Elzai, and that led to touring with Elzai, Sky Zoo, in support of the Pete Rock album, and just like, yeah, it's just been it's just been a journey, bro. <laughs> do you have a that's, oh, that's heavy hitter? You have a favorite spot so far? I know you got plenty more spots to hit, but is there any favorite spots like where you felt like, damn, this is, people don't even know me, and that you felt that that energy back, like oh. th- especially? I mean, I know you feel. <clears throat> that energy when you're out there but is there any uh favorite spots at this point man there's a lot of places i'm actually writing a book about like all, all, about all of that shit but um one city that always stands out that's kind of weird just because and then it's always it's not necessarily the city though that has a lot to do with it sometimes it's the performance like oh this city i killed it and then got this certain response and then this city i did shitty and didn't get no response you know what i mean but um, one city that stands out is Syracuse, Syracuse, New York. And it's just like, you know, not a city people would usually think about. Usually they skip it because it's like not a lot going on there. But we just happened to get lucky with some first time promoter that was going to college there. And he set up a show and it was lit. It was a dope ass show. But like the thing that stood out was like I did my thing. Like it was my last night on the tour that I was on. And then like the guys were going to keep going. But I had to come back home. So I might have just gone in there with that energy, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking, this is my last show. It was the last show of the tour, but I was like, this is the last show I'm ever doing on, on planet Earth. And um, I just killed it, and the, the response was nuts. Like, I, to this day, like, I see numbers on my Spotify and shit from Syracuse and followers that still talk about that show. It's like a shit. college town. So, yeah, 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 exactly. Good. And that that's what's, you know, also crazy about the journey of getting out, because a lot of people don't, I mean, either get that opportunity or make that opportunity for themselves. But yeah. um, that that's the thing you see when you do get out of whatever might be considered a whatever comfort zone or, you know, home plate or whatever. You you get to see a whole another light shit on the artistry that you bring, because these, these are not people that you've seen before or slapped hands with before. Like you're going to a whole new town and to see them re- reciprocate the energy that you're giving them on the stage. I know that feels good, man. So, yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, and that, and that's like a lot why artists do this shit in the first place, man. It's just that, like, give me that energy back on the art I created. And it's like, it's cool, man. It feels good. For sure. So, but, um, I, I, I wanted to ask like, so it's a skill in itself to, uh, I, I say this because I, feel like i'm okay at it and i think it came from me moving around a lot as a kid like my mom was a single mom most of the time raising me and my brothers and we moved a lot and i went to different schools and different things but it it taught me to adapt to the situations and also learning how to network and meet new people because i had no choice but i I wanted to ask did, did that come naturally for you because one thing to excel to where you're at now again which we're going to get into but uh networking is important man and yeah. you seem to figure out a way so from even the paid dues to the tours you went on and stuff you navigated and one dot connected to the next dot and you you seem to have figured that part out um can you talk about that like that's a skill in itself like i said the yeah. networking part is important man so i didn't know shit about networking <laughs> or nothing like that i mean growing up um 
I mean, we were, we kind of kept to ourselves, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, especially at that time, it's like, you know, you got your crew, these crews over here, and it's like, yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever, and it's just like, we don't fuck, you ain't know, with us, you, we against you, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, eventually, like, out of high school, I had, like, in 2010, when I decided to do music full-time and all that, I was like, yo, I want to get an internship, like, at a record label or something, and, like, I had my dream set for something big, but I'm over here, like, looking, like, on Craigslist and these little websites, and I found, like, an independent, a small independent label um, in Hollywood to go intern out of, and then I thought it was super dope because, like, when I went in there, he had, like, Chino XL CDs and then uh, Nori CDs and fucking um, just cool Keith and, like, random uh, hip-hop acts that he had put out along with, like, plaques on the wall and shit so, I'm so like, oh. you, you knew like you were in the right spot like he, yeah yeah that, he's that, done honestly, some shit. it was funny because like i mean the plaques on the wall were just like oh yeah they're just gold plaques silver platinum plaques and then i'm just like yeah that's cool but then i see a chino xl cd box full of cds and i'm like all right that's gonna make me stay yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny i i mean side note i'm just, like going off here but i used to like always steal like mad cds from uh from the spot but it was part of the job but uh, anyway like promo I, I would, yeah, yeah. yeah i would attribute like the my networking coming from my internship like the shout out to jay warzinski um uh activate records he really took me under his wing and he was just like yo this is he he was about independent before independent was like cool like he used to work in the record labels and then he was like you know what i'm gonna start my own record label but it's all gonna be towards independent artists and being able to help them stay away from signing off the rights and all that shit so then it, he was really like ahead of the curve with that for him to do that had to go back to networking also like he must yeah, yeah. Have really he, knew how to connect with people he, right? he was like 40 50 years old you know what i mean he's like just the og in the game and then i, I just happened to come across him by you know look, looking for an opportunity and then he's the one that put me on to like network and then he was like yo you need to get you some business cards you need to get you some flyers and he's like oh you don't know what a music conference is he's like oh come with me next week to fucking ASCAP expo or new music seminar or whatever make sure you have your fucking cds and your business cards ready to go and i'm like oh what the fuck and then okay we get there and he's like all right i want you to go up to as many people as you can start a conversation with them tell them who you are make sure they leave with the, either a cd or a business card and make sure you leave with theirs and then after that he's like when you go home keep all those business cards is and when you go home fucking wait wait the next morning he's like send every single person that gave you a business card an email and he's like send them an email reminding them who you are what you do and how you guys can help each other out and i was like Shh, i never thought of that you know what i mean and then once he gave me that gym every single place i would go i would walk around get a fucking vend we're at a festival and there's mad vendors i'm going to every vendor getting a fucking card getting an event a, a business card or a flyer and then the next day i'm emailing them like yo nice to meet you and fucking let's see what we could do let's collab on something whatever you and get some that, free gear out of that for you know yeah, promo. I mean, i've gotten gotten so much out of just doing that i've gotten put on shows fucking tour opportunities made money with these dudes fucking you name it, you it know what it's mean? crazy like how far um you know sometimes just being cordial can get you you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so people you know and i get it it's a hip-hop thing too but it's like you know the attitude part sometimes i think prevents people from other opportunities yeah it's the hollywood, that, hollywood that shit chip you know on the shoulder yeah, yeah, type yeah. of shit and then, then we're talking 2010 i'm brand new so i'm like 20 years old something like that and i'm just like all right this is what you want me to do all right this is what i'm gonna do and um this is when social media is barely starting out kind of it's, yeah. not, it's not like it is now it was, can, you know. people didn't depend on it well, like, that, yeah, well, yeah. Hey, th thank you for saying that i was gonna say it's to the point where it's they people depend on it as yeah, their yeah, only yeah. means to get you know the the art out there or the the word out or whatever and it's still we didn't have social media before and somehow it still got out you, so you had to go i, th I feel like you still people. got it yeah, yeah exactly like you had to actually you know uh slap hands with some people and say what's up versus just go listen to my cd and send it to everybody and spam them on you know people e even yeah. these days people have social media and they don't even fucking use it they ain't messaging people they're just sitting there waiting for people to discover them and it's like dog there's millions of people that you could literally just get in contact they're just with they're just posting videos of someone's talking all day like or, or, yeah you, know I mean, you can go, go out <laughs> if you're out here you can go out and get it but in online there's a way of going in and get it too like yeah. you know what i mean hey, and you know um but you know going back to what you were saying 
um, those are real gems who are spitting for like an up and coming artist, producer, yeah. or anybody getting into the business. What you just said is like mad important as far as like uh, promoting your brand and um, getting in certain doors, you know, so you can get into the next door and stuff yeah. like that. But, you know, that you were lucky to have uh, somebody that showed you a little, but you were independent and uh, I guess you had enough forethought to think let me go out and find somewhere where they can actually show me that and you went out and found where you can go intern and that that's fucking dope I see I didn't even know that too that's yeah. a new one for me I did I always seen it like fucking I seen it on movies and shit like that people would go intern at labels intern at labels and then like in, in 2010 I had decided I was like yo I'm doing this I was yeah. like that's something smart to do and I, I was going to school at the time too and they would always say like oh the best way to get a job or something is go intern go look for somewhere you could intern so i was like that word stuck in my head and i never personally knew anybody that did it like i have tons of rapper friends and but none of them ever had the ambition or whatever you want to call it to like try to get into the music industry that way and um yeah, you learn just, a lot like that like you just absorb yeah. everything well that. and that's the thing too i think a lot of the times uh you know, people kind of think, oh, I got a, I got enough homies or, or, you know, I'm this dope. Someone's just going to come knocking on my door and, yeah. and, you know, hey, come on, I'm going to sign you. Like, it, there's a lot of things that go into play or where people even get into those positions. But, um, you know, that's it. That's an important thing you said, man. For man, real. That, that's the best job I ever had, bro. I was just like, like right into the shit. You know, my dude, he, he would get backstage passes to all the big festivals and shit like that. So he'd just be like, oh, yeah, come with me. Fucking hold the camera or some shit. Like, just I kind of help me out. I kind of knew, you know, even since like w when we first conceived this show and, and, you know, started being consistent with it almost 12 years ago now, like I mentioned. I kind of knew, okay, maybe we are doing something that's reaching some community because, um, dog, we, we've had interns. Yeah. Like, we've had people come in here and, and get their learning, whether it was cameras, whether it was DJs that they were coming to study, even interviews or whatever. But we've had a few people come doing, like, kind of what you did, their research, and then coming to want to come and learn from us here. Yeah, that's Just dope. by what we're doing, you know, be putting something on. But, you know, that that's when I kind of knew, oh, shit, maybe we, the community is watching. You know, they are yeah. listening. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. So, hey, um, getting getting back to the music, you know, we talk touring and stuff too. But music-wise, um, let, let them know, the pro let people know the projects you got out there now. Because um, I wanted to ask a couple more things about the, the music side. This is a uh, uh, projects that are already out. Or yeah, shit yeah, I'm stuff. Work, shit, I'm we'll, working. And on. we'll get into the stuff you're working on now, Maybe. also. But what, okay. what do you got out there, man? Let the people um, know. So I've been working on the Freeway series. Uh, it's a it's a series of projects. Or it's a series called the Freeway series, and um, I got inspired by like I grew up on the mixtape era, the Mid Little Wayne, the Joe Budden, yeah. the Dedication series, the Mood Music series. Um, all that shit, you know what I mean? So I always wanted to have my own series, and then I came up with the Freeway series, put the first one out in 2014, got a good response, and then I was like, all right, I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this going, did the second one, did the third one, and then I just did a fourth one. Um, I just released it, like, in December, I think, or January, somewhere somewhere around there. And, um, yeah, in between that, you know, I've dropped projects. Uh, I've dropped the album. I dropped the EP with Ariano. Um mad singles mad features shit like that but um yeah ariano yeah. man he's talented bro like, i heard that joint with that, dope. Yeah, oh, thanks, that, yeah yeah she was dope as fuck bro yeah, yeah and he, his his versatility is crazy like his his uh the way he can adapt to all the different artists he works with and i'm a, yeah. like because i hear like different people that end up working with him and then like the collab joints just seem like if they've been working together forever it's like he he gets in their their brain and figures out how they do stuff it's, it's kind of cool man yeah i so, love i love working with dude like he always brings something different out of me he doesn't give me the same shit that i'm used to he's always like here do something with this and i'm just like ah, i like gotta well, figure it out you know as an artist though you i'm sure you appreciate that though I from do. being challenged from the producer side of things right yeah because i i think also that's that uh that's that uh you know working together is that like this guy the as the producer he sees something in you where he, he maybe like let's let him go out in this 
yeah. this range a little bit instead of just letting you stay comfortable and 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 do the easy stuff man that, yeah. that's that's a cool collab i've always dug that relationship between producer and and artists when they take that and take it to another level man that's that's hip-hop hey uh real quick i wanted to say because you call it the freeway series so i kind of wanted to it reminds me so how did you settle settle on the name on the the name that you go by 60 east i mean i i, I know where it is and wh what it is but how did you decide on that that was going to be your your name for you know um, you gonna... it was it was like a like a triple thing like we grew up doing like graffiti and spent a lot of time on the freeway and like our our crew like brand thing was the freeway like we were just like we wouldn't spend time on the streets we were like yo we're just gonna bomb the freeways and that was like we kind of became known for that and then um also just wanting to represent somewhere from from the crib you know represent the house represent somewhere people wouldn't be like yo where is that and yeah. have to look it up um also lineage to like my family because then my family's from like azusa and like they ended up moving this way right. and it's like the 60 you know it just represents all so of that over there yeah. and then yeah i ended up moving to riverside so then it was like the whole literally from la to, to riverside on the 60 um i've always lived like right off the freeway like my backyard <laughs> My backyard is basically the fucking was the basically the freeway for for a long time. Where you could throw oranges up at the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we used to we used to do we used to do all that shit, and yeah. then um, the good old days. Yeah, and then like the I mean like even to the to the street shit to the flipping weight shit to the to the days you know it was you know running packs or whatever it'd be on the freeway like uh -huh. busting emissions on the freeway type shit. Uh -huh. oh. So that one that one just like like kind of fell into your lap then like that moniker yeah i mean it was just i, I was going by something else like um for like till up until till 2012 and then like we were going on our first tour and i was like yo this name ain't working and i think it was actually the homie at the internship that was kind of like yo you're that name is hey what hey, <laughs> can we know it or what uh, is it yeah i was by it fresh was, mc uh, yeah. I, <laughs> it was a uh, amits it was an acronym amits uh -huh. i would have called myself amits and uh it stood for uh man inside the system oh all right all and right. um i was battling at the time so people would always like flip it and blah blah blah. and then i was just like yeah i'm tired of this shit bro. <laughs> I, like, I hey you know what because no we've had uh you know mcs like eat some ogs and stuff too and it's a trip to hear some of the 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 early monikers yeah. kind of like but you know that comes with growth also like you grow out of certain phases and the, you know what this is where i'm at now and that's what sounds right um let me ask you man um because you know working with cats producers and stuff like that have you with the networking and stuff that you've done um is there any you know artists that you would like to work with eventually that you haven't yet oh shit uh, tons and the, a lot of them are through people that i've been able to find to to work with like you know i would love to work with alchemist and you know i i've been working with evidence and this is like yeah that's kind of like the thing up from there and then like i've been working with the uh, with crisis and eric g from the soul council so the the next up there the rest of the cats you know ninth wonder and knots and um cats like that and uh that's again back to network just i'm kind of already in in this in the room with you know these cats and then it's just like oh they're in rooms with these cats and it's just like okay let's hopefully these cats hear the music we make and then yeah. they're like yo let's you know let's work with do it or whatever does does some of your you know uh well i, I mean obviously kind of like the moves you make it seems like one thing you do is see uh you, you can't you always see a bigger picture like okay so you link here and you you link there but this is on this could create this possibility and this possibility and but it's still all organic but um you you kind of seem like you see a bigger picture when you're working um yeah. the way you make moves man I mean, shit is chess not check is bro yeah, you know what i mean yeah. you got to see the mangles <laughs> yeah yeah and and i, I mean that, and that's all part of the business side of it too bro is um not only marketing yourself but um creating an avenue where um to make a living off of it too man yeah. so yeah that that's important that's crazy bro because i i feel like you know because we've known each other for a cool minute but i feel like the the moves you make you kind of always see that bigger picture in mind when you do it so yeah. um on that note w let's get into it man um how did it how did the you conceptualize throwing your own i mean it's it's one thing to throw a show a festival is a whole nother thing yeah um but to do it 
also successfully to where people wanted more of them that that is big bro but how did the how did it come about where you conceptualized doing this and you know I, I, obviously you, you part of paid dues and stuff so you got to see a a good blueprint of a good festival yeah um but what made you say this is something i want to take on and how'd you create that I mean, it, we could go as far back as to when when I was in high school, we would like throw parties at my mom's crib and like book DJs and artists and dancers and shit like that. Oh, and so you had your own festival at the at mom's crib? Yeah, <laughs> for, honestly, honestly, we low key did. Like, I still have flyers from the motherfuckers. You know how you know many pay, mean? like you know how many of my homies said back in the day, bro? They don't know like when they would go on vacation that their their pad would it would end up like it was throwing the, the, the best yeah, parties yeah. while they're yeah. I still to this day have people. They were like, "Yo, I know you." because uh i went to one of your older brother's parties yep. it was like the one on weird science remember the, the party oh, they threw at the yeah end? that was a, that was a good one <laughs> hey, hey dog we used to do it at, like every year like twice a year at a certain point a couple of my homies that they're still homies to this day but they would like have planned kind of planned vacations yeah and it, the, the kids were already old i think you know we were in high school too like you said and and it was like our minds were already turned. All right, we got a party going. They're going to be gone. We got a party at this house on this day. Yeah. This house. <laughs> and, you know, I still fix things now, right? But uh, quick story, like one of the homies, Pad, he would always have a party when his parents would jam. And no matter what, bro, something always got broke. Like, <laughs> oh, for sure. Whether it was a fucking window, something. a hole in a wall, who knows how, yeah, you know, allegedly. People don't give a fuck, bro. <laughs> Doug, like and, uh, so every couple of days, you know, before the parents, we knew they were coming back. Like I would be the guy over there with a drywall patch. They'd be hitting me up. <laughs> hey, rabbit, can, I, can you fix this hole in the wall before my parents? Hey, dog, we replace windows. We would go oh, get the window cut at the hardware store. I'm not store. the one that made the hole. I'm going to yeah, fix yeah. it. <laughs> but I, I, dog, we had to look out for each other, man. But I, I would be the one like we'd put a, take out the window because I had a big hole in it. We'd put a new window like in a little window pane, put the putty and for the most part, I don't know if the parents ever noticed. I'm sure they did at some point, but <laughs> we did our damn thing. But um, that's where it started for you um, from the from using the crib. You just you just reminded me. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, I mean, you just I'm sure you got some of those. Nah, no, you just reminded me more of of how I'm the person that I am today. Yeah. From from that is like the events we would be having. Like my brother would be like, "All right, you guys go to this mall," and then it's like, "Dog." We would literally go to the mall and every girl we see, like, oh, yo, you know, we're having yeah. a party this week and blah, blah, blah. And, like, to this day, like, yo, you'll catch me at whatever show going through the line. Hey, that fast fucking October 1st. Yeah. Well, you, and I'm like, yo, it stems from that shit. Well, you know, you know what? what? And the, du the dudes will come. Tell the ladies about it. And yeah, the, yeah, The dudes yeah. are oh, going to so show up. For the house party, <laughs> for, <laughs> for the house party, it was like, yo, strictly girls. Yeah, you know exactly. For, for the festival, I got to go to everybody. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But, like, that just having that came from that. So to plant that seed already in high school and then 10 years later, that's what I'm doing. That's, uh -huh. you know, makes sense. But, um. So I would go back as far as that, like, you know, throwing events in high school and then being part of First Dirt. First Dirt would throw events in Sacramento and then we would fly out like headliners, like a, a Dead Prez, Immortal Technique. We did Cannabis, Locksmith. And then it was like we kind of already had a formula in play. And then when First Dirt, Tim from First Dirt moved down to L.A., we were like, all right, we need to start throwing shows down here. So we started doing like little shows with Blue, Chino XL and shit like that. And then it was like, we always had the idea, like, as we started doing pay dues in these other festivals, we're like, yo, it'd be dope if we threw a festival one day. And then um, fast forward a couple of years, and then my, my brother-in-law ended up purchasing that venue or becoming a partner at that venue where we throw the festival. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, now we actually have somewhere we could throw shows. And then, but I was still so focused on being an artist, it would be like, oh, yeah, let's throw a little show here and there. And then we started doing pretty good with the shows we threw there. So then for so then my brother in law was just like, yo, what could you do in the back in the parking lot? And I was like, shit, let me see what I could do. And then that's how the idea of throwing a festival came to happen. Well, because that that right there, like the original one, um, like you said, the other ones were kind of like a prelim to where it was going um, and seeing, you know, the response, the the connections with the artists and yep. getting this. But but bro, like coordinating that fucking because we you know we've been to I, I we've been to most of them uh, i believe i've been to almost all of them i might have missed one or two maybe but like even the very first one like all the 
like there's so much planning that goes into yeah. that is that i mean do you um enjoy that pressure or do you have a good team that works with you because dog it's everything that for people that might you know just be a fan and it, as you should just enjoy the the music enjoy the show but there's so much that goes into it from coordinating with with artists to you know getting a stage getting sound getting every the lighting yeah, if it's at night and all that. Uh, vendors you got vendors like packed in that thing too artwork it's like all the elements are are kind of captured uh -huh. but that's a lot of planning, bro. Yeah. I mean, the first year, I didn't know what I was getting into. Like, I would just expect it. Oh, I'm just going to throw a show like everything else. It's just a little bigger. Fuck no. <laughs> and then it, the the big thing about it, that, and I'm glad that I, that I knew to do this, but it was just like, yo, I'm not throwing a show. I mean, when it comes to a festival, it's like you're not, and I think this is where some people get it wrong, you're not throwing a show. You're building a brand. Mm -hmm. And it was just like I saw that bigger picture back then, and I was like, yo, I can't just throw a show and promote it off the 6Ds page. I got to build a new, I got to build a fucking Instagram, Facebook, Twitter for this one thing, build this motherfucker from scratch, even if it's only five followers. But every single, okay, that that's one thing, just building the brand. Okay, let's we need a logo. We need a website. We need all of that before the festival even all the other shit comes into play. It's like, we need the foundation to be built. So it was like, all right, first, the first month was fucking all that shit. Just like, all right, build the infrastructure. And the yeah. Get, get the logo, the fucking trademark, the website, the fucking social media. Even right, coming build, up with the name, build, even huh? building to that, coming up with the name, building all of that shit. And then it was just like, okay, the next step is like budgeting, get, getting the artist, blah, 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 all of that shit. And then it was like, Oh, now we need to promote this shit. Like, how are we going to promote it? Where do we promote? Who do we call? Where do we put money? Blah, blah, blah. And then all the little things that you don't think of, the lighting, the fucking, the rails, the porta potties, the fucking, every security. little thing. Security. Security, all the little details. And I was like, my head wasn't even there. And then I think this was God testing me because at that time, so much shit just got, you know, thrown my way. And then it was just like, fuck, am I supposed to even be doing this show? But the fact that, we we got through all of it and made that first show happen is you know i think as i look back i say it's shitty but people were just like yo no you it was cool like it was a vibe you know whatever oh no you know? well obviously because that set off the next ones people all wanted to be a part of it whether yeah, vending exactly. be an artist whatever and and that's crazy that you mentioned that um about that that pressure coming back at you is because um that's usually the i mean kind of the difference of where you go sometimes is yep. or the success you you achieve from that is is um the 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 universe or or whatever it might be circumstances working against what you're doing it it only uh makes it even more i guess um enjoyable when yeah. the shit still happens so all the forces that tried to go against it, dog, we still had a dope show we still had a dope festival yeah, so it, it was wild it. bro it was wild like um my laptop that I had everything on, like all the thing, I was like, I was somewhere I was I was supposed to be. We ended up getting raided. Cops take my laptop, and I'm like, uh, whoa, what the fuck, oh, yo? I was shit. Like, and my laptop was like in custody for like the two months, and I had to get a new laptop and do everything from scratch. And like, Damn. and then it, I, yeah, that part sucked. And then another part was MERS announces that pay dues is coming back. And it's the same day as our fucking show. Oh, oh, shit. And I was like, I, I was grateful because I was like, we've been waiting for Paydews to come back. I love that platform. You know what I mean? I was like, I was already planning on going the next day, you know, on Sunday because it was going to be a two-day event. Uh -huh. But, like, the day they announced Paydews, I remember calling half the lineup and I was like, yo, you think we should cancel? Yo, you think she would push, postpone? You think we should do this? But like, half the people were like, no, I can't do next week. I can't do next week. And then it was like, well, looks like we got to go up against the people we're – basically trying to be like you know what i mean the the ones that inspired you yeah, yeah. We, we were writing it out and dog, we we didn't sell shit for pre-sale tickets we sold like maybe like 10 15 tickets and then the week of the both of the festivals um mers announced that paydues got canceled and then oh. we were like oh shit signs of hope and then maybe a couple weeks before that i ended up getting my laptop back from the cops and then I was like, yo, sign one first sign of hope, and the MERS canceled pay dues. I was like, yo, second sign of hope, and then after, as they canceled pay dues, I noticed a couple more tickets selling, and then also because it was a couple of days before the show, and like that's how hip hop is. Oh, and then, yeah, but still, yeah. to the to 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 say like we only sold like thirty pre sales for the first festival, but we still, 
you know, good thing like people came through the day of and we broke even. We didn't make no money, but it was just like everything happened everybody had a good time and then everybody was like yo this is a thing that's you know, what i was foundation. gonna say that yeah. set the that set the play in motion right there because you saw that that response all the stuff you had to go through to get there but i mean i felt because i was there dog i mean i was i had fun seemed like everybody else did too yeah. so you know and luckily that, hits. luckily that cop didn't take all your information and throw his own festival yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah facts <laughs> LAPD <laughs> fest or something, hey, but no, but that that's a lot of uh, of stuff to to have to go through, um, and then still take the pressure of the day because I know there's all these things coming at you left and right while you're doing it. Yeah. Because I know you know even when we're doing this platform on on Mondays, I mean most of the stuffs, you know, stationary stays where it goes, but there's always things that we don't account for like. Yeah. all of a sudden the internet goes out or whatever it might be it's it's stuff that we can't control but then again uh the, like the the saying is and i've learned i i remember watching entertainment for since i was a little kid and they always say the show must go on and yeah facts. we got we got to figure a way around the little uh things that hit us and you know we got to get around it and keep the show because people actually um come out and pay to have a good day and watch that show man yeah. how, how does that part feel for you as as far as i mean i don't know if you feel it as a responsibility but um it almost is dog people they believe in what you're doing with the thought fest and and they they're willing to buy their tickets now and do the pre-sales and everything because they know they're gonna have a good time and they're gonna see some artists they want to see yep. be able to catch some good merch all that stuff man but uh do you feel any of that or do you you get any good comments from people and stuff about the experience they had at your shows yeah that that always feels good you know it's like putting out an album and getting complimented on it you know it, it feels good hearing something good about something you created and um like you said, now it's like to the point where we're seeing people come from outside of the country and uh, around the around the country and from different continents and shit. And it's like, yo, what the hell's going on? Like, yo, this this is crazy. And um, this is some just, international shit. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, just the fact that the the brand is getting out there. And uh, I mean, I joke about it, but I was just like, yo, Thought Fest blew up faster than I did. Like, it was like it outgrew me because it's like, and I had a couple friends tell me they'll they'll be in the crowd talking to random people. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, I know 60 East, blah, blah. And they're like, who the fuck is 60 East? And they're like, it's his festival. And they're like, oh, that's cool. Like, And then that's when he, my friends would tell me, like, yeah, this is, it's bigger than you now. It's like, you're just another name on the fly. But that's that's when you know you create, that's when you really create something, though. Yeah, yeah, for I mean, sure. dog, because you want it to take it. it it's it, You created it, but it took on a life of its own, so to speak. And, and, and that's always, uh, to me, that's always important. And a lot of like people may maybe not real I, I like watching documentaries and shit bro yeah and uh but like a lot of people that are you know became a corporation or a a big business a restaurant that that everybody knows or whatever it might have started the same way it's like they created something something they wanted something they had passion about and they maybe didn't realize the response it was gonna take yeah. but i mean i'm sure it's always welcome when you're the creator of it yeah. um that response and that that has to feel good creating something that got that big bro it does it, it definitely does obviously it comes with some some negative too you know there's the haters too that be talking shit but, uh, well yeah. or yeah. i'm supposed to be on that line up or something oh fuck okay. the rappers I don't, <laughs> fuck fuck. The rap I don't give a fuck about those stupid ass rappers i'm talking about just like the regular oh, yeah. the regular cats you know yeah. what i mean they were like well, talking shit, well i think that's what you also know like uh you know okay i'm doing something dog i got people hating on me for no reason they don't even know me <laughs> yeah no so, I like so I, i'm I doing something good yeah, now i think it's funny yeah yeah, yeah it is hey, hey I, I was gonna add like kind of let into one of the things i was gonna ask about what is something that you have learned about um you know artists or or, or hip-hop in general from throwing these festivals because I'm sure, um, like you said, it has its share of headaches too. Oh, yeah, rappers are trash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's. They have a bad. They have, uh, you know, uh, what is the word? Etiquette uh, or 
No, no, it's <laughs> what the word I'm looking for is they fe- what's the word they Entitlement. feel like, well, it, there you go. They feel like they deserve something yeah, like yeah, yeah. like uh, you know, sometimes you don't even know them and they feel like you owe them something, dog. It, like the entitlement thing. I mean, it, I cuz we see it here, dog, and we, yeah, we just do yeah. a show every week. I mean, like um Luck Mer- Merz has been really a uh, uh, a cool mentor. Um he he's kind of reached out and been just like, "Yo, if you have any questions, you know what I mean? I I did pay dues for this 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 long. I have a lot of experience so he gave me a lot of game early on we've had a lot of in-depth conversations about that shit and he told me early on he was like bro you're gonna hate rappers by the end of the <laughs> end of the festival he's like rappers are the most entitled fucking divas in the fucking world and you're inviting 10 of them 10 20 of the best ones and the fucking you know it's all it's we just kind of joked about it but it was it's definitely a thing bro just like Yo, why is my name below this guy? Why am I performing before nah. this guy? We've had people pull out of the show because they didn't like their set times type shit. Nah, um, shit. Luckily, I have a, a a good name and a good relationship with a lot of cats like that know a lot of cats. So it's like not necessarily strangers doing business, but um, we've definitely had some of that. And to be fair, there's been a lot of artists that have good teams and they're, they're fucking on point with all the emails, on point with communication at the show. I'm not asking for all kinds of crazy shit that they didn't ask for fucking weeks ahead of time you know all, all that shit so i always definitely shout out to the cats that are on their shit you can see why they're more successful than the cats that aren't and you get to see that firsthand yeah from you know uh throwing the whole venue and dealing with all the cats but yeah even uh you know kind of what you said sometimes we have our our moments you know doing this for so long or sometimes i go motherfucker, like <laughs> these fucking dudes like yeah, yeah. we're here doing like I feel like we're doing the right thing. Give them a platform to speak. And then they're asking for all like this extra shit or whatever. Like, bro, like that's not how it works. Like, yeah. We were supposed to work together here, but it's, it's crazy. The sense of entitlement that, that people do have. It's, it's, it's a trip to me. And we, like I said, we do see it firsthand. Um, so besides that part, is there, I mean, is that the most negative part is dealing with sometimes the artists? yeah probably probably that that would say it i mean and luckily our crowd isn't like no no too crazy they definitely fuck up the porter potties every year with the tagging and shit oh. but like that comes with the hip-hop shit yeah. um i thought yeah, you were gonna crowd. say in the other way though the ones that go to the ones <laughs> oh, yeah, that go no, to the no. show to take they, a they shit they had the, the, yeah. the vendor with the chili or something yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> big shout out to big rob the champ yeah. <laughs> um he, he sends people the to the map. porter <laughs> Shit, he sold out of chili at the last show, so he, he probably the reason they blew porter up. Porta potties were on fire. Um, yeah, I mean, there's other than just all the nitpicking, all the little shit. That there's uh, not too much to complain about. You know what I mean? Yeah, the uh, I but that's important. You said that. I feel like you know because I've even been, I've hosted shows. You know that wasn't even my show. And I'm just there. They ask me to host even certain segments or whatever. And I, I'm there to host and cats will be coming up to me going, hey, can you get me on next? Like, dog, I didn't make the lineup. Yeah. I'm actually just here to to help to work, you know, with these guys and this to go talk to them, you know, because I like my whole thing is like sometimes, too. I'm not I'm not going to sit here and argue with you, bro. Like yeah. this is the way the shit is. This is the way the show goes. If they change it, they'll come tell me, and we're good. Just and I tell them like, go find that. Like, why are you? I'm the host, bro, and you're pressuring me to put on. Like, I've seen, I've seen cats like literally bullshit their way on stage to get a slot. I'm yeah. sure you've seen that too. I've but, done it. Oh yeah, <laughs> 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 bro. I've had cats tell me, yeah. Uh, I just talked to so and so, and they know the guy, so it's like, oh, you're up next. All right, cool. <laughs> and then I, they come up like, hey, how did uh, so and so get on? Fuck, he told me. You <laughs> I don't know. I'm not security. That's a trip. <laughs> hey, uh, I got a question, too. Uh, if you could take us back to, uh, what, around 2020, when I think you already had a, a festival about to be booked when the whole pandemic thing happened, right? Yeah. So what was your thoughts or what, what were you thinking was going to happen? or what, what, what? That shit sucked. I was uh, like, I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on. People were just like seeing, we're just kind of seeing shit getting shut down. And I wasn't like watching the news or nothing like that. And I was like, yo, guys, don't worry. You know, we're not... Coachella we're not that big of an event like they're not gonna shut us down but then it was just like yo everything's fucking getting shut down and then I remember um talking with evidence about it like the day it was like March 14th or whatever like the day before everything got fucking announced that it was getting shut down and he was like yo it's we it, it was crazy like having a fucking um 
end of the world conversation with one of my favorite rappers. You yeah. know what I mean? like, <laughs> we were cool at the time, but it was just like we weren't like fucking good friends or anything to be having that kind of conversation uh -huh. but it was like the was times like, dictated yeah that. yeah and it was yeah. like we had a good a good long conversation about like yo what should we do blah 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 and um we on that conversation we kind of decided it was like yo it's best to at least like let's sit it down and then since he was headlining it was like really um i want to say motivating it was just like encouraging that like okay he was like yo I got you, bro. He's like, whenever you decide to do the show again, I'm all headline. Like, don't worry about it. Like, don't worry about that shit. And then at the same, in the same conversation, we're like, fuck, is the, is this it? Like, is this going to, is the world about to end? Like, <laughs> who knows type shit? You know what I mean? Then it's like, let's throw one last one just to set the world yeah, off. Then, like I mean, we had that, <laughs> it was just a crazy combo, but then we had discussed it and we are like, he, he reassured me. He was just like, I got you. He was like, whenever the next show. I was like, all right, cool. So then he was, another thing that we had said was, um, it's better to be ahead of it than it is to be behind it. So he's like, if it's better to cancel than to get canceled, then I was like, all right, cool. So then we made the announcement. And then the next day they were like, all right, no fucking events for the next fucking three Damn, months or whatever. Timing, huh? Yeah. So it was just like, all right, like, we ended up being in front of it. But it was definitely a headache trying to bounce back from that because of all the ticket sales and then dealing with all the artists that already had deposits out and all that shit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and then confirming that they can come back when you, exactly. Uh, That's why like, we, we ended up losing like, um, like on that original lineup, we ended up losing blinds and gab. And then we ended up losing Sage Francis. But I think, I think those were just like two of the main acts that we had lost. Um, and we haven't been able to get them back on, on another show. But yeah, I mean the bounce back was crazy. But luckily, everybody's team was cool. Dizzy Wright's team was cool. Uh, Rock Marciano's cool. That the one that Crooked was on too? And, no, no, that no. The, that was uh, the 2019. That's right. That was the year before. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, it sucked because you know we had the Still launch party. The launch party was doing super good, and then we had Harry Mack do the lineup. And it was just like super good momentum. Oh, Harry going Mack, into the freestyler. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I we had a freestyle. Yeah, yeah. We had the oh, lineup um, that year, and then it was. Uh, it was said to be a dope ass year, but you know everything canceled. I can't even complain because people lost millions. People people lost oh, their lives. You they know lost I mean? yeah, yeah, jobs, like, their companies. Fuck, yeah, fuck it was a, crazy. Fuck, dog. fuck, you know we can't. We had to cancel the show. You know no, I mean? yeah. who cares, dog? Uh, you you guys <laughs> navigated through it, and it, it seems like you know. Well, especially during that time, though, um, you know, as, as a hip hop head myself, you know, from where it started for me. Um, I know like so many people even that I've talked to like you know it was cool like people were like okay we'll get a little break I don't have to go to work for a little while but then it got to the point where it's like I just need to get the fuck yeah, out of the house dog I, I need to go to a show bro like and I and I think uh, a lot of pe a lot of hip hop heads had that same feeling because I feel like when shows started again like people were out there to support man you know yeah, what I mean yeah. like, I remember those first couple shows being outside it was just like man have it, you know, usually run into the, the same cats at the same show, at the same shows, like, you know, whether it's a month or two or three months, you go without seeing it, you'll run into them eventually. And then it was like, damn, I haven't seen you in like two years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Seems like yesterday. Yeah, yeah, Fuck, shit crazy. Uh, yeah, I've been in the house for two years. How about you? Yeah, same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's <laughs> no, wild. yeah, it was, it was trippy times, bro. But uh, yeah, luckily we're able to navigate, navigate through it and. Um, something we talk about like on b-side a lot like with the artists is it, it i feel like it also it it made not only the the fans kind of reappreciate the art yeah but it also made the artists kind of go back and some of them even reinvented themselves some yeah, of them no got a whole new inspiration from being okay this is what i do this is my art this is what keeps me sane right now like and art became a little bit different too, the way it was expressed. So, yeah. a lot of different changes out of all that, man. All right, man. We're talking all the all thought fest and everything like that, but you know, my my brother briefly mentioned it before we get into the new lineup and all that stuff. But um, how how did you guys come up with the title? Um. So I read this book called um, The Happiness of Pursuit, mm -hmm. Finding the Journey That'll Bring Meaning to Your Life. It was a long-ass title. But the happiness of pursuit part always stuck out to me. And then it was not only the name, but it was also what the book was about. So the book was about this dude that he had a goal that he wanted to visit every country in the world before the age of 35. And he wanted to write a book about it. But he decided instead of writing the book about his journey, he was going to write it 
about the people who he met along the way that were on journeys of their own. And then he talks about meeting this girl. Just like, oh, her goal was to take a, a million photos. And this other this other dude and his dad, they had a goal to go to a baseball game in every at every stadium in the country. And it just like it was super dope. And then it made me think of my journey. And it was like as an artist and all the places I've been able to travel. And then every city I meet a dope artist. And I'm like, yo, this person's dope. I wish I could fucking tell my people my my fans or whatever about their story and then i was like you know what what if we built this festival based on that concept and then i'm gonna invite all these people that i've met from around the country that i think are dope and invite them here to perform and put them in front of my audience like homie from the book did but he did it in book form i'm doing it in festival form and um yeah, that's, that's I'm so all came I'm together. so glad it had a deep <laughs> meaning, bro. Like you didn't just say, yeah, I found it in a fortune cookie or oh, something. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no, that no, no but, but that, sense that makes a lot of yeah. sense because the journey and then all the artists are on that same, you know, yeah, their so own it's, journey. It's not like, just the name too. It's like the whole concept of the festival is built upon. You know, we call them independent artists, but it's just like these are people that are like on the seeking the happy and getting the happiness out of being on the pursuit of chasing their art and, and that's the thing it flips it because you know usually they say the pursuit, the pursuit of, happiness, of happiness but this right. is actually the happiness of the in other words the yeah. journey is the part exactly. like a part, yeah. the journey then, is the good part someone so. asked me that question yesterday i didn't know how to word it but um somebody had said it in the song they always they say um getting there is getting there is way more fun than getting there yeah. And it's just like, like you said, this is the journey, not the destination. Uh, I just yeah. seen you see uh, the homie, man. Shout out. We'll probably have him on the show, too. But the homie Jake has. And he also recently uh, has his own business he started. Dope. But he's he, he was just saying something on his post the other day. And it was about that, too. He's all that. This is the part I like. Like, this is I, I decided to start. I wasn't happy when I was I was he was at a place. He was making decent money. But that's not what made him happy. He wanted to do something himself, what he created, a business. And he's even saying, this is the part where I'm beginning. I don't have no employees. I'm going door to door with yeah. my flyer. Like you were saying earlier, he goes, this is the part I like because I'm going to look back later and go, this is the part. This was what it was all about. And, you know, I, I also um, I, I try to take that into consideration every day, bro, because, you know, I'm getting up there, too. Um, sometimes I feel like I. I know I've done a lot of good things, but in my own mind, sometimes I'm not where I want to be. But then I always have to sit back and remember that part, though, and it's 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 the journey part, man. It's yeah. you know um, it, to get where your where your goal is or where your goal is trying to take you. But it's that middle part that we got to appreciate more, man. Yeah. So that that's hell dope yeah. title. Yeah, hell yeah, it makes fucking like even when you when i first heard it when you first came out like that shit just makes it like a lot of sense it's like, yeah i i got like, it but yeah, yeah you know what i mean it's you. like the actual pursuit is not that you know like the, i mean the happiness along the way type of thing but i wanted to ask you um so out of all the years like i, I know there, there's probably a lot of them but i mean what's the first name you think of when you're like damn i got this dude on my fucking festival ob trice real uh, name oh, no oh, gimmicks yeah, right. no gimmicks <laughs> That's was uh, yeah. He was I'm, dope. I had yeah. his album. Dude, first we album had all those now. albums. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I did. I did an interview last night, and they asked us so how that shit's at the top of my head. Yeah, but yeah. um, yo, OB. I mean, like, go back to high school. I got to live through the G Unit, Eminem, yeah, fucking yeah. era, D12, yeah. and all that yeah. shit. So I was like, being able to grab someone from there, and I always thought OB was hella underrated. I always think, bro, he, I, I was gonna could, say that he could spit, bro. He he's hella dope. His voice was hella dope. Mm -hmm. I I just liked him, and I just I was, people just kind of and um. His first album, that the album that he performed at the festival, classic. Cheers, classic. People would be like, yeah, I have that like, when it nah, came out. fuck it up, bro. Like, front to back, that shit got hits, bro. Like, yeah. classic hits to take you back to that era. Yeah. And um, and it's not just that. What was the drinking one? The, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Only, it has the sounds right. of the, the bottle. The, or, the, the got, got some glasses. Got some teeth. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. When I wake up, hopefully she got some da, teeth. No, that was like the single, but it was like there were so many dope songs on that yeah, album, bro. He was hard. Yeah. And then on top of that, yo, I've never seen no no other festival book dude, bro. Never, ever, 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 bro. Never seen nobody book them before. So I was like, that to me, especially for year two, people were like, yo, Greaves, Fashan, 
motherfucking Obi tries, bro. Like, oh, <laughs> they were the even fuck? saying, <laughs> "What the fuck is this full sixty thinking? Like, what the hell?" And then That's it was dope. like bro. in a good way though, because you know the the hip hop heads were going, "Fuck yeah!" Oh dog. yeah, hell yeah. And uh, I mean, that's something that I feel like people always compliment the lineups, and uh, I've noticed that the artists that we book, they're fans of hip hop, so they're always people always say that this is like an artist's lineup, an artist's lineup, and then um. Because you got to know your shit. You got to be in the culture. But it's dope seeing, like, some of the headliners be backstage. Like, yo, I'm sticking around to watch fucking Lighter Shade of Brown. Oh, yeah. Fucking, or I was going to say that. That's pretty dope how, how the, the mix of artists, too, because it's like, you know, you get somebody like Evidence and you, you get, like, Lighter Shade of Brown. But you it's have kind of yeah, different yeah. types you of, have not you know, only, uh, you know, you're, you're not only, um, you know, bridging the, the difference in age and, the, and uh, time they came up. But it's also like bridging all the different subgenres yeah. that have evolved through hip hop because it's That's, still it's still a dope lineup. You can hear one style of hip hop, then you're gonna hear like some some classic style or whatever it might be. And, and then plus you got your battle back. rap stage still yeah. going on too. So that's and that, a, that's always been the goal, dude. You don't want to hear fucking backpack fucking raps all fucking day long. And it's like hip hop is such a big culture now. We have so many different pockets. There's literally so many pockets we can't fucking fit them all on one stage but it's like mm -hmm. and and it's also like you can't just pick one from each and think everyone's gonna match you kind of gotta have Merz Merz gave me a gem and I'll, i guess i'll tell you guys for anybody out there that ever wants to throw a show but he told me that they at pay dues that he would book in threes and he's all because chances are if you see three artists that you fuck with then you'll go to the show but if you only see one you're like ah, i don't know anybody else and then that 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 bar always stuck with me so i was like all right let's try to we haven't we can't afford to book three artists of every shit yet but so we try to do like one or two yeah. hey you guys are you, you're right there bro and you know that that's so um uh, like again i've been a hip-hop head dog since the shit started pretty much pretty yeah. much i mean you know but um like from break dancing to being oh. an artist to being in studios to re you know putting on a platform to hosting shows all that stuff and you know, one of the things I I really dig about it is that that part, bro, is where like you were just saying is like say so, uh, a younger artist say just rips the stage, right? And they got their fans out there too. But then you know, an older head, an older artist that might be coming up, an OG in the game, might catch some of that. And then vice versa, it works the different way. And you see the showmanship, like so. Then the younger artist will say, watch like one of the OGs. Yeah. And then just catch gems from like say their stage show because you know from all the years of, of cats doing it um they refine their stage show there's so many like levels in this hip-hop shit dog yeah. when you want to be entertained and that's one of the things why i've always just loved hip-hop so much bro it's just that whole engulfment of all the different cultures all the different now that hip-hop is getting in an older stage um finally getting 50 right yeah almost 50, 50 yeah. next year it's it's getting to a stage where it's being accepted like say your rock and roll your country music your yeah. well, you know whatever you might have um we got grandparents bumping fucking yeah tup tupac and, shit. And, and and that's the other beauty you have you might have a grandparent or a parent going to a show with their kid oh, my, yeah, my mom has a <laughs> tupac cd <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. i was about to say that like um say a lighter shade of brow and a fucking dizzy right you know what i mean that's somebody like yo i want to go see dizzy right and pop is like yo i remember lighter shade yeah, of brown yeah, yeah, yeah. back let's in the, roll my, back in my day you know what i mean he's like oh yeah. yeah let's go i'm down to go yeah we had we had people like that too remember that like, oh like, dog yeah uh, like it Kid was Frost uh heavy so. uh uh the homie heavy yeah. i think you know heavy uh uh but anyways he came i i can't remember i don't know actually i don't even think he was booked on the show he had hit us up randomly he watched the show. He was like, yeah. can I come watch so, it? So he in, goes, in hey, dog, he hit me up, like, on a side message, like, bro, my dad is a fan of Kid. We had Kid Frost on. He's on. My dad's a big Kid Frost fan. It, is it cool? Is it possible that I could take him over there just to check out the, <laughs> yes, though, the yeah, show, bro? And I was like, hell yeah, dog. And, and dog, they both had a great time. And Frost was happy, bro. He was like, fuck yeah, dog. You slapped hands with both of them. And he, he even told him, like, thanks for bringing your dad over here, yeah, like, to check dope, out the And Frost even performed. It was cool, man, because he didn't have to that. do all that. But that that whole thing of uh, a part of hip hop is, you know, the... Um, I guess it it's goes generational, well, yeah, but, it, but it goes back to the for me the networking part is like I met so many people through hip hop 
that I would have never probably had conversations with. Like you even said, ta- having a whole conversation about the end of the world with <laughs> yeah. one of your favorite artists. Yeah, like, yeah. this is the shit that hip hop builds, bro. And it's, yeah. it's like one of the coolest things for me, bro. Real talk. Um, who, who, the new one, man. Talk about it, man. You guys, uh, what, what number is this? So this is our sixth show, Sheesh. but this is our fifth year. Okay. So it's, it's in 2019, we got ambitious and threw two shows in one year. Um, don't train trying to do that shit again. But, <laughs> yeah, so this is our five-year anniversary. This, you know, um, I'm just, I'm, it's crazy to even see that we've got to five years. And I, I've had homies that thrown festivals and shit like that, and they've been, they hit me up, and they're like, yo, getting to five years is a fucking thing in festival business because so many people bust their shit on the first one or the second one and then it's like three and four it's like okay but five is like yo you're cemented like you're you're a staple type shit and um so that that's gonna gets me super excited but um yeah that that's where the idea of like yo we got to go all out on this fucking lineup came from who are we gonna see there man so to start it off, like we could even just go back from the generational talk, but like the top two names, Reason, who came out within the last four or five, four or five years, to the far side, who came out fucking early nineties, you know what yeah. I mean? And just just those two top names cover fucking thirty years of hip hop. Yeah. In the two first names, and then from there, just you know, it trickles down. But um, yeah, so Reason representing TDE, the whole that whole camp, um, that whole wave. Um, super excited to have him on the, the bill. Whole fucking lyrical uh, ability on that crew is ridiculous. Yeah, they're they're just they're they're super dope, and yeah. it's just like um, they don't it, they I don't want to say they don't sound like like golden hip hop because they kind they kind of do, but it's like over newer wave beats. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's like not too far fetched for like the the cats that are stuck in the boom bap era or whatever to find something they like about this cat. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, the far side obviously legendary hip-hop group oh, yeah. um it's very rare that you get to see and perform like as a group but this year they uh decided to i'm glad they're doing stuff you know the the crew back you know doing yeah, yeah. stuff together for again, the man. for the 30 year anniversary of the bizarre ride album yeah all um, right so that's i mean being able to have that legacy perform at the show is super that's dope. some classic shit um shit motherfucking sugar free dog uh oh. pimp, 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 pimp. there's not there's you gotta have him in promote i mean you know he's near his, his you know he's nearby his yeah I'll, I'll, I'll if about i to tell say you that, a flea you could pull up you take a chain hook his little ass <laughs> i was about to say like um aside from just being a west coast legend and then bringing a whole different flavor to the show so he grew up down the street, you know, Pomona. He's a lo- yep. local cat. Um, Sai Hi the Prince. Um, Dog. I, I was just watching. I randomly, like, I'll just have weeks where I just go on and I'll go on in my pad and I'll bump on my surround sound of YouTube and just yeah. bump in some ciphers, whatever it might be, a concert. Random I go shit. different genres of music, but I'm glad you mentioned that because I was just checking the, I think it was the Sai Hi on the LA Leakers. Yeah, I think it was yeah, that yeah. joint. Dog. he that, went crazy yeah but the thing is, is he, he's and that's the thing with artists like that a, again a part of hip-hop i love is when they're just so uh like confident with themselves mm-hmm. and oh, they yeah, stop dude yeah, and but... he's just literally like <laughs> it's just so easy for him to rap dope yeah, and yeah, like yeah. you know somebody that shit. what's crazy is that somebody you know i've got to interview and i'm I'm going to have him on this podcast eventually. The homie fucking, you mentioned him earlier, but Chino XL. Dope. And it was crazy for me to hear him um, talk about other artists that how easy it comes for them. When it seems like, you know, yeah. hearing that from Chino because other, you know, rappers look up to Chino. Man, his pen is ridiculous, dog. And, um, and his passion behind the mic and all that stuff. But it was crazy to hear him, a lyrical beast yeah. dog talking about how he sees c- certain artists seem so comfortable and and just it's like natural like he mentioned cats like raz kaz and different people but it to hear that from another artist giving respect is is cool man that's real dope sci high that's dope that chino just dropped that that comic book with oh the yeah homie gift revolver he's another homie of ours he drew his comic for his new shit that shit oh, was sick hard. artist he dog he did all the out. illustrations for his oh, new comic yeah. man oh and yeah. and who else we got man um i mean yeah yeah it was not uh sci high i mean just i've been a fan of dude forever from all the shit he did for kanye with kanye and fucking see and i want to see him live over here yeah exactly yeah. i've never seen him live so yeah. that's another thing um next up we got ninth wonder and the mussolini uh 
Ninth Wonder, obviously legendary producer. Yeah. We've been trying to get him on the festival for a minute, and he just happened to drop this project with Mussolini. He's a who's a younger artist out in New York, but the project is super dope. And I was like, yo, let's get these cats on the show. Um, Locksmith representing the Bay, super dope MC. For those that don't know, dog, I like ask somebody. I literally like. I mean, almost all the 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 raps that he posts on his shit, I I post them, bro, because yeah. it like it's just certain shit is so raw, like He's it's so dope to it. me. Yeah, dude, I remember being He's a so fucking, fucking uh, lyrical, bro. Being a kid in fucking junior high watching um MTV or B. Oh, he was on that show. He battled yeah, on the fucking battled. show, I remember, dude. Dog. And I, I want to say that was one of the first battles I ever yeah, seen, and okay. then like, to this day, I re I remember him from yep. that, and then um I remember that following I his career the whole light the whole way. So he's a legend to me, even though to some people may may not even know him. Like to me, I've just seen him come up, and um super dope to to get well, him on the show. And again, it's 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 also super refreshing again as a hip hop head though. But when you got cats that are like super intelligent with yeah, it, yeah, like. Yeah spitting so many gems on a in a verse sometimes you, and, and and i always love that where you have to go back and rewind it yeah like damn what did he just say damn Wait, that's crazy bro him. and that's that's locksmith bro. yeah him and Sci High. Really. yeah Sci High um, too yeah uh open mike eagle representing project blow yeah. um the blow Com comedy central i mean that dude open mike eagle such a legend also um Shit, I gotta pull up this damn line on myself. It's all good, well, man. I know, I know you got the, the little sister, yeah, homegirl yeah, Bella, on memory. there too. Right? Oh yeah, Bella shout, the out, to, shout there. out to Bella the yeah, rapper. Yeah, another, the another yeah. uh, you know, a new artist that's doing her thing, passionate man. She's the homie of ours. She comes through here and kicks it, dog, because she don't live too far from here. But oh. um, it's it's so dope, to, like again, to see like the growth, like and yeah. and dog. She just she's she's uh, she works hard, so yeah, she deserves what's coming. You know what I mean? So, yep. um, Afro, all flows reach out. What um, up, Afro? Shout out to Afro. Bro. Um, who hopefully whose album, his debut album, should be out before the festival. We're we're hoping so. So that's gonna be super dope to catch him. He's been working it. on that for a while. But the <laughs> thing is, he he want, I, he had that. Com <laughs> we we've had him on the show, and he had the conversation about mm -hmm. it. Uh, he told us like it's he's he wants to get it right. He wants to do it. It's his first album, bro. He's still young. Fuck yeah. it, dog. Do it right. It, like it, it's crazy. Um, me and Afro became really good friends over the. I I got to tour with him in RA in um like 2016, and then ever since then, like, I I Afro's probably like one of the people that I've spent the most time with, like outside when of you my, were when you were on tour. And no, stuff, I mean like, just the outside of oh. my outside of like people that I grew up with. Like no, right. I, I'm, I spent a lot of time with Afro and shit. Just like just he's probably like one of the closest friends that I've made within the the hip hop shit. But um. Yeah, like I, I've been at his crib and we're like celebrating his album being finished like five times already. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> We'd be there and like, all right, it's for this this time's for real. All right, let's take a, let's take a shot. <laughs> and fucking a couple months later, it's like, oh shit, this happened or this happened. And I'm, I've been part of it. I've been part of the creation of the album, like part of the from almost the beginning so i'm like almost as excited as him to get his album out there just so i can celebrate my homie's album you know yeah hell I mean? yeah um el camino representing buffalo and uh griselda affiliate you know what i mean he he was actually at the festival when we had a uh, benny and conway but he didn't perform but um yeah we just wanted to have that griselda energy at the show uh crisis representing the soul council jamla records and all that um propaganda other dope super a uh, super dope mc uh i don't like classifying people but like they call him the christian hip-hop artist so he's kind of representing that forefront on the show uh sadistic and no no representing a uh, cunning linguist sadistic you know rhyme sayers affiliate all that um they've been doing their thing they just released the album together lucy camp you know lucy camp came up cypher effect mc yeah, uh, yeah. representing the bay We've been trying to get her on the show forever, and I we actually had an event earlier this year, a part of Ladies' Night, and we had her down here with Vel the Wonder, and uh, it was super dope. And I think it was her first like official show that she that she said. So I'm pretty sure this is her so first sad. first festival she's gonna get to perform at. Soundtrack, man, Soundtrack just got signed to the Soul Council. Um, Mad Lib is really big in this dude up. Everybody like this in the producer beat world is like calling this kid the next Jay Dilla. Super excited to have him on the show. You guys said Bella, A Wall One. You know what we say? Let, legendary, shapeshifter, uh, yeah, legendary dude. Um, 
Hey, what? fun fact. He he designed a couple of our shit. Uh, you know, the a couple of our things we've done on shirts and stuff. Dope. Yeah, he's he's, he's, super he's dope. also an artist too. Yeah, yeah. graphic artist. Yeah, super yeah. Dope. Um, Whitney Payton. Whitney Payton is someone I recently got put on. She's from Philly. She's been doing a lot of stuff on the West Coast. Um, a lot of stuff in the uh, LGBT community. A lot of stuff. Just getting busy, and she's a spitter. And um, yeah, I just I've been watching her, and I was like, yo, she's represents something different and i was like i like that i was like i want to bring her to be part of the show uh def, you know defying ariano noah james myself um daisy lynn lisa vasquez patty clover diamonique um man they're just oh you, oh neek's going yo oh, bro, they're, shit. They're, there's just so much heat yo that's know? my <laughs> homie from like yo dog yeah, that's like, the fam Pat, right patty's there. one of our fam and, here too and, she and comes and in one of our DJs every once in a while she's man, the homie family, yeah bro. like the diamonique like growing up in the ie i used to look up to she was part of the whole sly boogie dirty birdie oh all that yeah shit going on, oh so dog like, i saw her in lunch or working on a uh they're working on a project together yeah, too. He yeah. lunched Pete the that. general. He was yep. from the 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 whole uh, homeless nation back in the yep, day, bro. Yep. All that. Um, I mean, what up, so Nick? the the line the lineup keeps getting crazy. Um, the ground wave. So a big announcement that we have part of this year's show is uh, we added a third stage, um, officially, and uh, it's hosted and curated by the legendary artist Merce. Okay. Um, he picked he handpicked all the artists on his lineup. Um, so just to have him part of the show was super, super dope in itself. Um, people that we just had actually hosting, hosting the main stage, we got Lush One, Legendary Battle Rap, Ooh, no. uh, Connoisseur, you know what I mean? That's our boy. And, uh, Justin Hunt, you know, my, personally, my favorite hip hop journalist in, in this whole shit. But, um, if you guys aren't familiar with him, check out all the shit he did with Hip Hop DX and the breakdown and all that. And, um, yeah, shit. Oh, we actually just added Chewy. Chewy from the Bay to yeah. be okay. from Roman on the show too. Um, Damn man, big 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 things right there. But bro, I was gonna say like, it seems like um, you know it comes from a the way you put your festivals is not just to throw a festival and get tickets sold. It's like you're a fan as well. Yeah, and yeah. you could tell, but bro, but by the way you put the lineups together, and I like the diversity, like I said, and. And having that, you know, from far side to reason, bro, it, it, it just, it gives everybody the full, uh, kind of their full meal of hip hop yeah. for the casual fan that might just be on one thing. They're going to get their full dose. And people, that's the other thing. And when they see live performances, it, it, that's what I think me as a hip hop head, a lot of the cats that I end up following and being a consumer of their music is some at some point I saw him live yeah. and killing shit and I said damn this dude's dope I gotta support you know what I mean so yeah there's shit there's been cats that I listen to their music and I'm like oh this dude's whack and then I'll see him <laughs> I'll see him live and I'm like oh, oh yeah. never yeah. mind this never mind yeah this motherfucker's dope <laughs> yeah, yeah. like I must have listened to the wrong track yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta or, see the rest of the yeah, catalog or I didn't see how the energy yeah, yeah, that the was energy. supposed to be with yeah. it you know at the same time man but hey bro um let, let's talk about this before we get in the rabbit fire round but as far as your new music yeah. um you've been mad busy as well on that tip um staying busy but uh let's talk about it man what you got let the people know so loosely I, i've been i'm working on a gang of shit a gang of random shit but i have like three projects already set ready to go they're just waiting for the final triggers to get pulled one i have a single with evidence um that's nice. just it's been tucked that i've just been sitting waiting to drop it uh with the special feature uh, I haven't announced it yet, but um, yeah, I'm super super excited to drop that. Did uh, he produce it? Evidence produced yeah, it. Yeah, I was in the, he's his production is sick as well. Besides yeah, yeah, being a dope artist, yeah, man. for sure. Yeah. Um, I have a I started a new group with uh, we actually just talked about him Afro. Um, and this just goes back to me being at his crib, fucking watching movies, smoking weed, just chilling, and we're like, yo, let's just make some music. <laughs> All right, fuck it, let's make some music. Um. And then, yeah, so he actually, people don't know, but Afro actually produces. He's a producer also, and uh, he produced the whole, it's like a five-song EP, so he produced it. Um, we have a song, uh, he raps on it too, uh, along with uh, me, him, and Razkaz have a joint. Damn. And um, that whole universe is like a whole, it's just going to be like a duo in itself, you know what I mean? We're just going to do something completely different branding-wise with that. Is there, my, do you guys have a group name for that yet or not nah, yet? Uh, we have it it's in, in the uh, works. Yeah, yeah, it's in the works. We're okay. still trying to pick the side. Okay. Um, and then my album. I, I say this is my debut album, even though I've been around forever, but this is like my 
first official studio album and um produced entirely by crisis and eric g of the soul council who grammy nominated producers you know what i mean they have hits with sean price mac miller fucking rap city um master ace um hella people you know what i mean they're just legendary producers and um they produced my whole next album and then the Damn. album's got got crazy features on it um front to back it's just i've never put so much into a project and it's just like a that's what I'm really excited to to roll out. And that low key, that's why I haven't been releasing a lot of music because I want to release these three things kind of back to back and just feed off the energy or whatever. So once I have all three of them ready to go, it's fucking go time. Do you have an order for that release yet, or like how, how tentatively? Like, how how soon? Like your solo official first solo is that? This year or early next year? Man, it's crazy because we've been working on it. Um, I got the first beat from the album in 2018 or seven, 18 when I was on tour with El Zion Crisis. That's when the first beat started, but I didn't like conceptualize the album to like um, the next like 18, 19. And Evidence is actually the dude that gave me the idea for the concept of the album. So they all kind of happened together. And then... Um, yeah, we've been working on it, been working on the mixing process. Luckily, like when the shut lockdowns happened, I was able to sit down, lay everything down, get most of the mixing down, collect all the features and just kind of get everything together. But now I kind of put it in the hands because Crisis wanted to mix it himself. So now the project is in North Carolina getting worked on at the fucking. But it, but that's, <laughs> but that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, it, it because is. Because he didn't want to hand it off to someone else. Yeah, yeah, he wanted true. firsthand, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I wanted him to have yeah, his, exactly. his hands on it. And, yeah. uh, but the problem with that is he's got a busy play. You know, he's working on shit with Busta Rhymes and Benny the Butcher, and I'm pretty low on his priority list. Uh, um, but we're but we're tight, and he 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 we're just in the finalizing ship stages. So I'm actually supposed to go to North Carolina to fuck with him in ninth and um that whole squad that's and, fucking and finish and finish the album. But that uh, should be a fun uh, mission too. Yeah, man. and I mean they're both on the festival, so it's just like um they'll be out here so. You know, that's that's one of the things also, you know, through my journey in this game, you know, from being in studios, from being, you know, uh, break dancing, whatever it yeah. might be. But when you kind of start to be able to chop it up with, with also cats that you looked up, looked up to or respect what they do. And when they start fucking with you and giving you their feedback, like I've had so many dope conversations with cats like. I literally was a consumer now I, yeah. now they're like homies of mine yep. but that shit feels good right there like okay I'm, i think i'm on the i think i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing you know what i mean yeah it did definitely and um yeah that's why I, i've been super selective about anything that i'd be doing like as far as artist wise just because like i'm really focused on getting these projects out and, and getting them out uh the right way you know what i mean and and now you're kind of setting uh the bar for yourself too because because yeah. now the, where, where you are going with it and the 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 networks that you made and the the relationships and the chemistry you built with artists and different things um it, it's like uh that it needs to be in its own place you know what i mean set it let, let it come out when it needs to come out man yeah and then like being the fucking face of the festival and all that has its you know benefits and and shit to it too but and also the negatives i can't be putting out no whack shit people be like that's the motherfucker. Yeah. Throwing <laughs> this is the motherfucker telling me I can't or can't be on the show. Yeah, this yeah. is the first part of the show. So is this the like, guy I was emailing? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, so nah, it's I like, you. yo, I got I to gotta come with that shit. You know what I mean? Hey, so uh, speaking on that before, we're going to get in the rabbit fire round in a sec, kind of tail this off. But um, we, we don't usually like, you know, we don't harp on too much of the negative in, in our platform in general. Uh, we save that, you know, shock jock shit for the other. Yeah platforms and stuff like that um but besides the the negative the negative parts you know dealing with artists and their egos and entitlement and different things like that what what has been the the best part for you um as far as this hip-hop journey whether with the festival or your music what what's like the the, the positive parts that you really pull from it Music wise, like just getting to con connect with my audience, like getting to meet people around the world that feel the way I do or like the way that I s talk about it or whatever it may be, just being able to have an audience of people that fuck with what I do um, music wise. 
as far as the festival is probably definitely getting to fucking have conversations with the heroes and yeah. the artists that I'm a fan of. Like I feel you on that. Getting to chop it up with Obi Trice or Mob Deep or whoever it may be. You know what I mean? Because a lot of the times, like I'm picking these fools up from the airport or fucking I'm the one taking them to the hotel or whatever, whatever it may be. And we just get to have like regular ass conversations and um, that that's probably that's definitely the my favorite part of the like festival. someone. Yeah, like someone that you grew up like checking their music or might have looked up to the way they handle their biz. And then next thing you know, you're riding in the car, just having a regular yeah. conversation. Man. Like I'll never Shit's forget dope. like rolling with Mob Deep. And I picked a couple of them up from the airport. It was like uh, L.E.S., Big Noid and Big Twins. We, they was all in my fucking thing in my mom's car. And like I'm taking these dudes to the spot <laughs> and just hearing them like, yo, what up, Doug? What up, Doug? Yeah. I'm like, yo, <laughs> bro, this shit is like. And then it was cool because I like obviously I heard it throughout the music and I always wonder what it was. But then I remember reading Prodigy's book and then him explaining all of that, and like how they have their own lingo in Queensbridge. And this was their shit. And then getting to be in the ride with them and they'd be like, yo, what up, dude? And I was like, yo, OK, you know what I mean? You feel you kind of feel a part of like that, that history. You know, I uh, I probably over uh, over tell this story, but like one of my like a favorite time in hip hop you mentioned Sugar Free is going to be at the show, but like I literally got to I, uh, with the homie uh, Casino who works with uh, Sugar Free a lot. Probably might be on the show with them. I'm not sure. But um, like I literally kicked it a whole weekend at Sugar Free's pad. Oh, shit. They were supposed to go do some music. I just went along and dog, we ended up just having it was a cool ass time. Just like, I like can you imagine said, <laughs> on some conversation shit. On like dog, I didn't know Sugar Free cooks. Like he was making food. Like yo, check this out. Like oh shit, he's like yo, rabbit, try some of this shit. Like I, it was just a cool experience for me. You know what I mean? Get so, you some of this. Yeah, yo, not it. everybody can say Sugar Free's cooked for them, man. Yeah, yeah, get you. Hey dog, he was like throw, catch it. He his back uh, porch was like it's like a lake, like where he lives. And, uh, like, he had his fishing pole, and he would just run out because he'd f see his fishing pole move. <laughs> and he'd run up, just pull a fish straight out of the shit, like, oh, right out shit. of the lake. That's like, crazy. While we're having he's all, hold on, hold on. He'd run out there. <laughs> whack. Yeah, that was crazy to me, bro. That was some trippy-ass shit. That's dope. Hey, Shay, you have anything else before we get in the rabbit fire round? Cause, oh, uh, um, yeah, just real quick. So, like, because I know you're, you're busy as hell with the music and the festival, but, like, when you get a chance to just chill, like, what, what kind of hobbies or interests other do you have, like, whether it's movies or video games or books. I, I, you talked a lot about books, so I'm sure that might be one of them. Yeah, a lot, I like to read a lot, Um, uh, but m by far movies are my shit, bro. I'm uh, a fucking movie buff. What genre? And I like fucking everything. Uh, um, But yeah, when I get a day off, bro, and I get to chill, Shay, I'll t turn he, my phone off, smoke one, and know if you like. Yeah, he right, wants right. to know if you like Marvel and all that shit. That's I do. <laughs> no, 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 key, I do. I'm, uh, I think that's his favorite. The shit, the shit that is the, the, the Infinity Saga, my shit. Yeah. Where it's going now, I'm kind of yeah. like, eh, about. It's getting but, um, a little bit. But, um, hey, Shang-Chi was good. Though, out yeah, Shang-Chi was dope. Shang-Chi was dope. Um, But, yeah, shit, I have the Avengers logo right here tatted, bro. Oh, um, shit. That's but, yeah, that, that whole fucking. Yeah. I went to every single movie for the oh, past for 10, they, 10 they, years, Me bro. too, like, bro. Like, they changed the fucking game, bro. Like, I think there's shit. only one that I didn't see in the actual theater. I think it was Iron Man 3. I, okay. did, I ended up seeing that when it came out on the DVD. But every, other than that, every single one I came out that weekend pretty yeah. much now that shit. that yeah. that shit's my shit that, man. That, that's, that's, that's the fuck i i like i like a lot of them i just don't know every single one it started with star wars though back in the star day wars. yeah like, <laughs> we we were on all that yeah, shit, all this shit star yeah. wars yeah, fucking uh 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 what was the, the crazy uh indiana jones all that like oh, crazy yeah. shit Fuck back dude, in the man. day hey uh let's get into it man uh these are just you know random just quick questions dog before we um get out of here but uh uh favorite you have any favorite you're always busy man uh your go-to food spots um fuck favorites uh, low-key I, I like trying new shit like all the time like con, con, like I'll, I'll be like all right let me see colombian food or something and then i'll try some random shit but um i mean favorite like the go-to's uh like some fast spots you know on um, your way to the studio or whatever yeah shit Zach Zachies, I'm gonna give them a shout out. Mediterranean Grill, motherfucking Pomona, Claremont, right there. Fire. See, oh. now I'm gonna have to try that. They that have they good. have them all over the place. Yeah, it's Mediterranean food, all oh, super like kebabs and shit. Super fire. I um, love kebabs. I mean, shit, quick shout, out, fucking King Taco. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? But That's, which one? You know how there's different locations. Ontario, or? homie. Oh, really? <laughs> hey, cause uh, which one? There's the one in um, in Pasadena for some reason is good, and then the original. 
but the one in Baldwin Park sucks for some reason. I don't know. Like different that. ones. I think it's I okay. Know. It's not as, I just well, that, that, yeah, because we, we used to be at spots in Pasadena, and there was one down the street, and that one just, I, I don't know if it was just because we were all yeah, buzzed after the, the spot or there, whatever, yeah. but that's all it that is. shit was dank as fuck oh, right there. The fat Burger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fat, that's fat one burger, of my so. favorite. Yeah, dude, that's I, I'm, a, I'm a Fat Burger over in and out cat. Hey, so do you go? Do you go with the fat fries or the skinny fries? Fat fries, all oh, day. Yeah, me know. too. I yeah. wish they had more locations, bro. Like, yeah, for yeah, like, sucks. They're, so, know, they're so far apart. Does Magic still own that? He, I know he like. Uh, I'm not sure. He was one of the. He took over as one of the owners at one point. I don't know if he still owns it, but that's just. They got one, they got one in Ontario, but it's like on the other side of town. So if I want it, I got a dip. Yeah, <laughs> but that's it's worth thing. it. Hey, yeah. you know, speaking of that, like what just reminded me, the hat. Like their oh, the hat is fire. Their pastrami's are the shit, dog. Uh, most of them are good. They all taste pretty much the same to me. Hey, um, okay, let me let me ask you this. Um, favorite, because we mentioned some of them, but like when you first started listening to hip hop and stuff to this point, like just name a few of your favorite artists. Doll's such a fucking nerd. I like the fucking all the lyrics, lyrical shit early on. Um, Rakim, Cannabis, Feral Bunch. Black Dot, Most Def, um, definitely had a big pun. I just had a time with all of them. Like those those dudes right there, I would just like studied. Right. Lyr- lyric has always been a lyric. Yeah, the lyrics has always been like for me, um, one of the the things when I would because I was one of them cats when I was a youngster. I would go every Tuesday when music came out and go see what's new. Yeah, but you know. I, by my budget, I would like be able to just get one usually, and I, I, usually what decided it was lyrical yeah. kind of content, bro. Yeah. Who else, well, man? Well, it was dope. When we remember, you used oh. to be able to listen to some of it at the block. But was it Blockbuster Music? Yeah, you with could the check some of it first. Was so dope. Yeah, that used to, that oh. was dope. I mean, that that would you said growing up or just in general? Yeah, in general. Okay, so that, yeah, growing you, up, that was like those five six. Nowadays, or like. I would say even a couple years, a uh, decade ago or something, the new lyrical cats, the Elzai's, the Fontes, the fucking Blues, the fucking Sky Zoos, the fucking... Fonte, you mentioned that, but, I mean, he he's actually, he's been doing his thing for a while, too, bro. Long time, I long think, time. like, maybe people, like other a, people are starting to catch on, but I remember, like... I mean, all the Little Brother shit. Yeah, like the little, from two, Little Brother, but you know, even when he first went solo, like, I was like, damn, yeah, this he dude's... got, like, foreign exchange yeah, shit, like, dog. he just had a wild run, Um, but yeah, like... Yeah, them cats. Well, we already talked. One of mine was a uh, favorite movie genre. Well, I guess we didn't name all of them, but do you have a favorite movie genre? I wouldn't say a favorite, but I really fuck with, like, the heist shit, heist movies, bank robbery shit. Oh, um, yeah. I have, like, the theme, too, with the tats. I have, like, Dead Presidents, The Town, Heat, and shit like, like that. Like the action fucking... Well, like, it's like, like the Italian action drama. drama. Yeah, action yeah, drama. Italian, Italian job's job. cool, yeah. Like well, like I, I like shit a little more gritty, but, like... Yeah. Italian drums, dope. Ocean's Eleven, With all that, that shit. Is my my shit's right. always yeah. been those uh, the the um, the gangster like the but the like fifties and so, like the oh, Al Capone right, right. Okay. type, yeah, yeah, like the so. mobster type yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like those are like one of my favorite. Yeah, genres. my shit. I always fucked with the bank robbery shit. I'm all, I'm on the sci-fi shit, but the thing is, I love comedies. But the thing is, dude, like it's it's pretty far between where you get a real good comedy anymore, though. Right? Same, yeah. You I'm not, that? I, I like comedy, but the same. It's just like, uh, like a lot of shit's corny to me. Yeah, it's like you know, like you know, you, you don't often get like a, something like super bad or something. Yeah, Some classic, of those are just fucking classic, dope, but yeah. like you know. I think most of those ones though. Up those off the wall comedies that ended up being classic is, I think that it was kind of off the wall, yeah, like they just kinda where they didn't, it, they did something kind of little different. Uh, like, I it, do have a hand for my like my top ten comedy type shits too, though. You know, like the go tos. Yeah, well, what go, what are they? <laughs> um, my sh- hot tub time machine, bro. The first that shit to me. Is See, hilarious. no way <laughs> that one. Hey, bro, that I gotta admit. Okay, now that you said that, I'll go back because I I never got to check that whole movie oh, out. I would no, see little no. parts, yeah, I but that. That was but I you know comedy. when it was like you're flicking through the channels, but I'm like this ain't the beginning. I didn't want to start, but now I know I gotta go back yeah, and that, check it. That that's one of my favorites. Um, this is the end. Guys oh yeah, like that, that, a, where it's basically like a, a almost like a reality where they played themselves, right? Yeah, with like Jonah Hill, Jonah Seth Hill, all those guys, oh, like Seth Rogen, uh, Jay Baruchel, yeah, and all those yeah. guys. All the, that yeah. shit is fucking yeah. hilarious. Um, damn. Did I mean, you ever classics. see on that on that note? You just reminded me because I brought it up before, but that one I had watched it randomly, bro, and I saw it from beginning to end, but it just tripped me out. It was a dark comedy, and it was called a uh, 
uh, what is it? The la- things to do at the oh, uh, seeking a friend for the end of the world. It's yeah. based on a book. Nah, I've dude, heard of it. Uh, Steve heard Carell. Of it, and Steve and Carell and uh, what's her name? Uh, Kira uh, Knightley. Is it Kira Knightley? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say Bonham. It's a pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, Doug, and it, it just it caught me off guard. Like, Doug, this movie's a trip. It's like a dark comedy, but it was kind of on that note, like the end type of shit. Word, you word. check that one out too. All right. Now, who else? Who else we got? Oh, I like the like, Kevin Smith shit, like Mall Rats and Clerks and shit like oh, that. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And the, 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 um, Jay, uh, Jay and Silent Bob. Bob. Jay and Silent Bob shit. Um, Look, I got it right here. I'm a- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, old school. Old school is funny. Um, old school is fucking uh, hilarious. Step Brothers. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, shit. So, hey, hey I want to just, uh, just shout out if anybody hasn't heard of a movie called, it's like an obscure movie, but it's funny as shit. With John Cusack called One Crazy Summer. You remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was John Cusack, uh, Bobcat, Goldthwait. Remember the guy that used to go, ah, like, you know, from Police Academy. It had, uh, who else was in that? I forgot, but, dude, that shit is just fun. Oh, Demi Moore is in it. But, dude, that shit's just funny. It's I remember. It's from the 80s. I remember that one, yeah. dude. Yeah, you guys got to go way back. And Fast Times at Ridgemont High is an all-time classic, too, for right. sure. And and all the, the Cheech and Chong shit, too, was original. That's going way back, but damn, yeah. bro, that shit was just mad original with the comedy. Hey, did you have any on the Rabbit Fire shit? I got a couple more. Oh, uh, let me see. Actually, there was one more. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I forgot uh, it. Right. Okay. Uh, anything you're binge watching yeah, right now or that you're going to go back and binge watch? Because I'm on it. There's a couple of things I got to catch up on. Doc, so I'm a, I'm a fucking addict, former drug addict, dog. So anything I get started on, I got to fucking finish. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, I can't. That's why I've been hating, like, the fucking. I get into a show with, like, six seasons. Oh, I'm dude. Like, that, I'm fucked for the next two, three weeks. Th- those bro. are the <laughs> ones that I, I, like, bro, trust me on that note. I'll hear about some, and I'm like, okay, I go, I start going back to, okay, wait, there's only one or two seasons of this. Let me start with this one, yeah, yeah. like, cause damn, like you said, then I start watching, and I don't want to stop. Bro, no, I gotta, it, it takes over my life, bro. But uh, the last shit that I binge watched was Hell's uh, Sons of Anarchy. Uh, I, I had never been on it, and then I got, I've been on the the Mayans, and then I was like, bro, let me go back to this shit. That's exact. That's what I did because wait, wait, wait. I I caught on on the uh, the Sons of Anarchy. Um, towards the last few seasons so what i had to do because when and they were talking about the spinoff and and i i knew people that were going to be in the mayan so right. I, I wanted to, i knew i wanted to watch and end up being real good but i literally after that i went back like you said and, and i watched the seasons that i missed at the beginning i went in reverse i like yeah. it's crazy because i watched season the it's like season three or something of mine and i was like oh this is hard we watched season two it was like, i didn't watch season one and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to start at the beginning of Hell or Sons of Honor again. And then piece it back together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like with me with the, like the, all those shows, I didn't start watching until years after they're already out. But I just, people like posted and talked about it so much. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, I got to check it out. Sons of Anarchy and Breaking Bad was another one. Where I watched I it way got, later. Yeah, I never got through Breaking Bad. It was Bad. pretty good. I didn't finish all the seasons, but like I watched the first season. Actually, it was, it, it was I fucking lived crazy, ba- Breaking Bad for a couple yeah, of years. Yeah, yeah, right. Was, <laughs> <laughs> you start seeing some. Too many life? flashbacks. <laughs> I remember yeah. that pad. Yeah, no, low key, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> kind of turn off from this yeah <laughs> hey bro like it was it was a trip because even like uh my youngest brother man he's doing luckily he's doing good right now man uh get, went got into the fire camp but he spent Dope. some you know doing some time in prison and different stuff but most of what landed him there was that kind of shit bad. and so like uh he started watching it when he when he came back before he checked into the camp and uh him and 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 well my stepdad his dad um started watching that and my mom's like i don't know like my mom's like i don't know if this is a good <laughs> idea i don't worry he's good now but they went back and started watching that but yeah exactly my stepdad would tell him quietly hey breaking bad let's go don't tell yeah your yeah don't tell your mom let's go watch, watch my season <laughs> 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 yeah but that shit people I, live through that yeah, shit i've been but. meaning to watch it though because i always heard it's a dope ass show i and then i just uh well i didn't have to binge watch because it just started but i got on that the legacy i got to the it's like to the third episode now the lakers man oh, wow. uh, yeah. the lakers that story. and the new stranger things season i still haven't seen I haven't see stranger time. things i have not got into I yet but that or game of thrones i never fucked see with. but those I never are, watched game of thrones but those are seen. ones both that i i've gotten such good feedback from people i know and trust their uh opinion that those are two of the ones that I'm gonna have to go back and watch. Oh, the yeah, fucking man, those two right there. Yeah. yeah, at some point. All right, I wanted to ask any uh, pet peeves, bro. Motherfuck- on. Motherfuckers on their phone. Like if we're if we're out eating or something, motherfuckers on their phone, dog. Like, I hate being the only person at the table not on their phone, bro. Like that shit. 
I get on my daughter about the shit all the time. I had to like ban that shit from happening. Um, like when we go eat, the phone yeah, goes that, away. Put that motherfucker. Unless you pay for this shit, put that fucking phone yeah. away. Bro. I mean, I like what you said too about even when you go to watch a movie, just smoke a fucking joint and just turn the phone off. Like, yeah. Because sometimes I'll catch myself. I'm watching it in the middle of it, and I'll start checking my phone. But then, oh shit, I missed is what happened. Like, yeah, yeah. I gotta yeah. just you know just put that shit aside. Sometimes right it has to dog. go to the side. I know that's the new our new information you know system and all that, but. You know, our communication with the whole outside world, but sometimes you just got to put it away. I, I think mine's my, one of mine is like uh, when you're talking to somebody, you're having a conversation and it's not like equal conversation. Like they just want to talk and they don't want to listen to like yeah. even when they sometimes they ask you a question and they're like, hey, so what do you think? And when you go to answer, they start talking. Like, Why'd you ask me, bro? Like, fuck, chill. <laughs> shut up for a couple of minutes. But yeah, that's one of mine. Any more? You might have. Um, motherfucking slow walkers, bro. <laughs> hey, well, well, me, because I'm such a buff, trying to get their ass, motherfucker. Like, if somebody is blocking my shit, bro, like, oh, uh, even I, driving, driving, driving. Slow oh, some people just me, have, bro, they, like, it seems like they have a lot of time, so they're just like strolling. Yeah, they did. I'm like, bro, some, I, some know, people already, approach man. life like they're going to wait for me to get yeah. there until anything happens. Bro, it's trippy. It's probably the opposite for me. People probably have the pet peeve that I, I walk too fast. Like, I got uh, I get, it from my got, mom though. My I mom's always on the, the go, bro, and I'm not even on on those kind of drugs. And I'm when I'm going, to, like you said, when I'm going to somewhere, I walk. I'm like I'm trying to get there, not yeah, like yeah. I'm just like. Ah, I mean, that my shit come from like not having a car for yeah. for, <laughs> oh, for, yeah. so, for so fucking long. Okay. Like yo, we got to get somewhere. All right, let's hit. Let's hit this motherfucker. Me too, up. running to catch a bus. <laughs> fucking mom. yeah, all that shit. <laughs> There, there was this, hey, bro, and I, I used to, get, like, even back in the day, like, walking to school or whatever, and there'll be times, like, fuck it, dude, this is taking too long. I'll just take off jogging. Like, <laughs> I got to get where I'm trying to get somewhere and then chill when I get there and not take all the time. Like, uh, the, uh, my lady, she was taught there was this dude in the hood, and it was her brother's friend. And, you know, might have been under a couple substances and whatnot but they said he used to like literally run wherever he was going oh, so he didn't have a car either so he'd be like literally like going down to the store down the street and he'd be running and they'll be like hey what's up yeah i'm going to the store you just be running hey you guys need anything <laughs> 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 you need anything i'll be running to the liquor store but yeah <laughs> the funny hood stories bro like the way we grew up man hey um I wanted to thank you, bro, for, for coming through and chopping it up with us, man. We got to have a good conversation. We've been talking about this for a minute, but like I said, we're kind of fine tuning a couple of things on our end before we can have you in here. But bro, uh, um, inspiration wise, like what you did with this festival and the way it took off running is dope for us to see too, as hip hop heads. So like, you know, we always wanted to chop it up on that level and it's cool that we're also kind of part of you know some of the events too like you know it, it was dope a couple years ago um the one we hosted in the well last year the, the the producer stage that shit was dope yeah they because like dude the producers are doing their thing but like randomly like the rappers artists, would come they, in they and start through, rapping they start hearing these beats and the, they, yeah, the whole yeah. session would just start and i right remember there. At, that shit was sick and at one point of the at the at one point of the thing it was like midway through the day before you know maybe before some of the main headliners went on the main stage but I remember at one point, and it was also because the bar area is that way. Yeah. But, dog, I remember there was one point, like, we had that shit. The whole oh, shit was packed, packed yeah, in that motherfucker, dog. And shit. they were listening to people rap, the producers doing their thing. It was pretty fun. Bro. Yeah, I seen so, footage of Mike and I walking through. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> He's like, yo, give me that microphone. Yeah. Yeah. He had, like, MC Wicks busting on some Wicks. He had, like, oh, just shit. people from all over. That shit was, it was pretty dope. Yeah, just coming in and rocking, man. So, um, any you know, anything to let the people know where they can find you to, to follow, get the tickets for the fest and – Anything that we might not have mentioned, dog, let, let people know before we tail off. Yeah, for me, follow me at 60 East 909 60 east 909 Shit, my old Instagram got hacked, so this is the new Instagram and Twitter um, for the festival. At T-H-O-P Fest uh, on everything. If you want to buy tickets, go to thoughtfest.net. Um, shit, if you listen to this shit, DM me. I'll give you some free tickets. Just mention, Hell yeah, mention you heard the interview. Um be on the lookout for the new music. Uh, got some shit on the way, and you know, come out to the festival. Hell yeah, man! That's that's real shit right there. And hey, and, and before we go, like, what is the spots you haven't visited yet that you would like to go as far as tour wise when you get back on the road yourself? Shit. Um, 
Australia. <laughs> hey, you bro, I mean? <laughs> I've always wanted to go there, except it's fucking so far away. Yeah, You'd have to just be good. able to deal with the whole trip over. It's yeah, like, yeah, I did. I did. What is it like a? Tw- what is it? How yeah, many I think hours? It's like twenty four hours. Like a whole, yeah, 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 literally to fly. Oh, fly. I always wanted to tr- go there and try out the accent and to see if people <laughs> believe me or not. Yeah, yeah. Order some fucking Fosters or something. Yeah, yeah. Foster, you're from fucking yeah. put another, California. Oh. Put another roux on the I'm Bobby, like, man. I've been I've been all around Europe with the rap shit, but I I still haven't been to Greece. And just because all the history in Greece and all the fucking Greek mythology and the oh fucking, hell yeah. The fucking Spartans and History, all that man. shit. Yeah, I've always wanted to Where do. Where the Olympics started and all yeah, that. The all Olympic that stadium. Shit, yeah, yeah. Shit. I, that, that's why I want to go to Greece. Um, but other than that, it's like um, Japan, Australia, shit like that. I've been all around the country, but there's been like certain pockets that I haven't been to. Like, been all over Texas, but I've never been to Dallas. So I always wanted to see Dallas. Um, yeah, they, they get lit over there for hip hop too. Yeah. I mean, basically, other than that, like I've basically been to like every other major city. Um Miami I, I too, Miami. I was in Miami last week. Oh, I did, oh I shit! Did this past weekend, not on some rap shit, just on some uh, fucking around shit. Ah, but. Still fucking oh that's yeah, dope, that's bro. still good right yeah. there. At least you get out to travel and and you know experience the different areas and stuff. But bro, like like you said, like some of those out of the country spots are the ones, man. They really they fucking dig hip hop so much. That they'll learn another language to sing along type. It is yeah. crazy, dog. That, that I, I like Europe for that reason because it's like, oh, today we're in fucking uh, Spain and tomorrow you're in France and then the next day you're in Czech Republic and the next day you're in Netherlands, the UK. And yeah, it's just Ireland. Diff- and literally shit. different, a whole different fucking country, but just day by day. Whereas here it's kind of like, oh, California one day. Vegas the next day yeah. shit's still kind of the kind same, of the you know same. What I mean? yeah. well basically oh. there is you're going to different countries in that same area we're going to different states yeah yeah just and they have, everything is just so tight like yeah. you might go from here and then you go to like you know Vegas or somewhere and they might have still like a mullet or a ducktail yeah. and that's the only <laughs> difference <laughs> Dog, it trips me out when I go to those spots like that and you see fools like they still have like a ducktail and like different it's, stuff. Like, I mean, it, it's crazy, like especially that like, getting a tour um, that the end of last year, we toured the Southwest and I got to see every from from Vegas to Arizona to Texas to fucking uh, Colorado. Hell, and, hella Mexicans, yeah, bro. And yeah. I'm just, before I remember touring and being like, damn, not seeing a Mexican for fucking weeks at a time. And it's just either white or black folks, wherever we're at. And then always being like, fuck, this shit sucks, you know? And, but now every city I went to, they were like, oh, no, we're all from California. It's like literally mad California. And then I was in a, I did a festival in Boise like fucking two, three weeks ago. And then I expected not to see nothing but white people, but at the shows, hell, the Mexican. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? And then I talked to some cat that bought a T-shirt off me, and he's like, oh, I'm from Compton. He's like, dude, my family just moved out here because shit's too expensive in California. Yeah. So yeah. especially if you live in L.A. right now, people are paying hella crazy prices for houses out here. People are taking that money and fucking yeah. moving out of state. And, yeah. uh, and then was, they uh, they still got to get their hip hop fixed. Yeah, yeah. He, I've heard he that about Utah me, you know, too. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with yeah. Utah. We were in we were in uh, Salt Lake City, and then he was telling me he was like, "Yo, in five years, it's gonna be majority Mexican up here." And I was like, "Yo, this is crazy." Yeah. It's and crazy. then you see the locals getting pissed about it. They're like, "Yo, we don't want all you fucking Californians yeah. coming over here." <laughs> yeah. You know well, what they you know what they really saying, bro? Yeah, bro. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we know, and you know, it, it was like that here, just in California, when people were kind of moving away from the la area for a while and you know and getting out to the outskirts and then now it's like going further outskirts let's go to a different state yeah it's like even expensive as fuck to live out in fucking victor or whatever yeah yeah a lot different than it used to be man we got to talk a lot about you know hip-hop is history influences man just the passion of hip-hop and you know why we all dig the music so much it's been a cool conversation man i want to thank you 60 for coming through and chopping okay. it up with us make sure you guys go get your tickets wherever you can get them get your pre-sales because you never know it might sell out at the door um hip-hop heads like to wait till the last minute so Fuckers. get in there. yeah get in there yeah, get don't, your- don't hit them up on the day of the show and go hey yeah hey come on get hey. me and my family in <laughs> oh, I, I have to my family of 15 dog i turned my phone off and they're like <laughs> Every time I have to go to the front for something, 
Sure enough, they'll be like fucking five, ten people like, yo, 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 yo. 60. And then everybody who's working, they're like, no, no, hide him, hide him. Yeah. Get him. Go, yeah. They're like, go away. Go that they're way. Like, go away, go away. You're bringing too much drama to the fucking ticket booth. Yeah, man. Hey, get it right, man. Get your tickets early, man. This is 60 East, man. It's been a pleasure on the Rabbit Season podcast. Get your tickets to the Thought Fest, man. Get that good dose of hip hop right there. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you, guys. Peace. Peace, Peace out. Man.